I believe God has a word for you. Amen. Are you with me, church? We you have your Bibles real quick, let's go to Hebrews 11, 1. Hebrews 11, 1. The book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1. And we can turn, if you don't have it, you can look at the stream. Pay attention, man. Ask God to open your hearts to the word. I rebuke the devil from any distractions. The Bible reads, Hebrews 11, 1, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Some will say, not seen. Not seen. Amen. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for. The convictions of things not seen. Amen. I want to talk about having great faith. Amen. God wants to increase the faith in your life. Amen. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. God wants to increase, say increase, increase. your faith. Amen. The Bible says in Matthew eleven twenty, He said to them, because of the littleness of your faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, say mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Amen. Say it will. It will. It will. will. Say it again, it will. It will, it will. It will happen. It will. Those mountains will move. And the Bible says, and nothing will be impossible to you. Amen? Because of the littleness of your faith. For truly I say to you. Quiet. Or I'm going to kick you out. Because of the littleness of your faith. The Bible says, Jesus said, Truly I say to you. If you have faith the size of a mustard seed. You will say to the mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. I'm going to pass something out to you, a man. It's in the bag like this. It's not drugs. All right? To clear your conscience. Uh, Brother Gabriel, can you pass one out to every person? Everybody. Everyone that's in this church. Drug dealer, drug dealer. Amen. Understand this, amen. Remember, God, what does he want to do with your faith? Increase it. Amen. Remember, God wants to what? Increase your faith. Amen. Hand out a pack. Just hand them out for you to be done with. Quick. Amen. This is yours to keep, amen. You can save this in your Bible. It's a little mustard seed, amen. Can y'all see that? No? It shows you how small it is. Or it just shows you that you might need glasses. Are you with me? Quick, 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 quick. Y'all see that I have yours? If you have it, pick it up. Amen. Everyone, make sure everyone has one. Anyone, everyone have one? Lift it up. I want you to see how small that seed is. Amen. Jesus says, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. Amen?
Jesus saying this. This is what Jesus saying. You don't need big faith to move mountains. You don't have to have great faith to move mountains. All you need is faith in God. Say faith in God. Amen. You need to have faith in God. You don't need to have a lot of faith or big faith or great faith. All you need is mustard seed faith. Amen. See, God is not looking for a man or a woman of God with great faith. He's looking for a man and a woman with faith in a great God. Amen. Are you with me? I learned that in, 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 when I was in Mexico, I was in Mexico for a, a, a month in Monterrey, Mexico, and, and that was the only uh, Spanish I learned. It's Dios no busca un nombre con gran fe, pero fe en Dios grande. Man, God is not looking for a man of great faith, but faith in a great God. Amen. See, faith, say faith, faith, is believing in something you can't see, but because of what you can see. Amen? Remember, faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. You have to be able to see beyond. The Bible gives an example in John 3, 8, it says, The wind blows where it wishes. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Jesus is referring to faith. You believe there is wind, right? How many ever felt the wind breeze in your faith? In your face. Right? And sometimes on a hot day it feels good to have a breeze come through. You can't see the wind. You don't know where it's coming from, but you know it's there. Amen. See, faith is trusting in God. Even when you can't see God, but you believe He is there with you. Like the song says, great is your faithfulness, right? Your love has what never failed me yet. And let me break good news. It will remain faithful. His promises endure. Amen. See, we all have faith. But most of the time, our faith is in the wrong thing. Let me give you an example. How many of you examined that chair before you sat down on it? No one, right? All of you just sat down. You believe that the chair was going to hold you up. That right. is faith. You have faith. A lot of you have faith that you're going to get high. You have faith this morning, I'm going to find me some drugs and I'm going to get high. You have faith. That was faith. It was in the wrong thing, but you have faith. You can't say, I have no faith. That's a lie. You have faith, but it's in the wrong thing. See, you, your faith needs to be towards God. Your faith has to be with God. Are you with me? I want to, I want to share this story with you. And before we, we I share this story, understand this. Amen. God is going to increase your faith. Amen. Amen. And for the purpose of this. The Bible says in 1 John 3 8, it says, The one who practices sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God, and what's his name? Jesus. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. The Son of God. Jesus. Let's try that again, man. The Son of God Jesus. appeared for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. With 
your faith in God will begin to destroy any work of the devil. Amen? The devil will try to throw everything at you, even the kitchen sink. But because you have faith in God, nothing will come your way. The Bible says, no weapon formed against me shall what? Not prosper. No kind of weapon, whatever the devil throws at me, it will not prosper. Why? It has to be a result of your faith in God. Amen. One of my very stories in the Bible is David and Goliath. Let me give you a history of David. Amen. David was a young man. A man, a young boy. And at a young age, God anointed him as king. At a young age. But he had a job. And his job was, was a shepherd boy. And he was shepherd sheep. That was his job. And as a young kid, it was his job to protect the sheep. He had to protect it from predators, from wolves, from bears, from lions, animals that would try to attack the sheep. Amen. And then one day, as, as he was tending the sheep, his father calls him, hey, David, I want you to take some bread to the captains of the army and go give me a report of how your brothers are doing. David obeys his father. But understand that David had faith in God. He, he knew who God was in his life. And then one day, uh, uh, he goes on a journey to visit his brothers in war. And there was an a, a enemy, right? Goliath was challenging God's people. A Goliath was a giant, nine foot tall. And a lot of, a lot of you, you have giants in your life. And they're draining you. They're cursing you out. Those giants could be your past. Those giants would be an addiction. That giant might be your ex-wife. <laughs> or your ex-husband. For the men. <laughs> the, but those giants could be anything that, that that's strengthening your faith. Are you with me? But God has sent this young man, David, God, he didn't know. David did not know God was sending him, but God sent David to go to the army. And as he approaches, right, he hears that giant Goliath threatening, mocking God, mocking your faith, mocking you what you believe. He want to ever receive any mockings? That's from the devil. You know what you're the devil? Your mama. Alright? Check it out. David, he hears him and then he begins to ask, What will happen if a man kills his giant? And they begin to say, Well, uh, the king will bless you. You're going to be married to the king's daughter and all this blessing that comes with killing the giant. And then David, not because of the blessing, he stood up to face this giant because of his threats against God's people. And so King Saul begins to talk to David and says, man, you're just a boy. You cannot face this giant. This giant has experience in battle for decades and decades. And you're just a little lad. You can't face this giant. They didn't believe. They had no faith. But David said this to Saul in verse uh, chapter 17 of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 34. But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after him and I attacked him and I rescued it from his mouth. 
And when he rose up against me, I seized him by his beard and struck him and I killed him. Your servant has killed both the lion and the bear. See, David had a past war, right? He had a little victory. As he was watching his father sheep, and the lion came one day to take a lamb. David went after it to rescue the lamb. And he saw that when, when the lion came against him, God gave him the strength to overcome the lion. Not just the lion, but the bear also. See, what the lion and bear represents, the represents little storms that you go through. And how God gives the victory over the problems. Like, oh man, man, God is giving me the victory. God is restoring my family. God is restoring my marriage. Those, those lions and bears are being taken down. Are you with me? God gives us the victory. Oh man, I love God because you're, you're seeing how God gives us the strength to overcome those lions and bears. Oh my. <laughs> and David said to the king, look, look what he says. He says, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them since he has taunted the armies of the living God. Look what David said. The Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of this giant. See, David had faith because of how God delivered him when he arose against the lion and the bear. Right? He had faith. He saw God move in his life. He had a little bit of faith. He meant God, he, he helped me to overcome this. And this giant that's coming to my, my life, this giant that's facing your life right now, I don't know what giant you, you're facing, but every one of you have giants. All you need to do is have faith in God that he will bring that giant down. Are you with me? Saul said to David, go, and may the Lord be with you. Right? And then going down in verse 40. The Bible says that he took his stick in his hand. That stick represents the cross of Jesus. Amen. He took his stick, he took he took his stick in his hand. And he chose for him five smooth stones for the brook. Five stones. You know what the five stones represents? A J, a E, a S, a U, a S. Five stones. Five letters in the name of Jesus. Represent Christ, the rock, who will overcome any enemy, any giant that's coming your, your way. You, if, if you get the rock of Christ, you can overcome any giant in your way. And all he used was what? One stone. And he used all five. He just needed one. Amen. He chose five smooth stones from the brook. He put them in his shepherd's bag, which he had, even in his pouch. And his sling was in his hand. And he approached the giant. And then the giant came on and approached David and with his shield bearer in front of him. Then when the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him, for he was just a youth, Rudy, with a handsome appearance like me. Roddy. Roddy, Roddy. Not this Roddy. This Roddy, a man. Handsome like me, a man. He approached David and he said, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And, and the giant cursed David by his gods. 
Then the giant also said to David, Come to me, and I'll give your flesh to the birds of the sky and to the beasts of the field. Then David said to the giant, You come to me with sword, a spear, and a javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. See, these giants do not come down by your fleshly mentality or by your fleshly words. The giant will only come down through your faith in God. David said, I don't come to you with man ways. I didn't come with you with a sword or with a spear or a javelin. I came to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. Let me throw this in there. Who made that sword? Man. Right? Yes, Who made the javelin? Man. Who made the spear? Man. Who made the rocks? God. Who made the stick? God. See, God does not deliver you through your works or man ways. He delivers you only through faith in God. Thank you. David said, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have taunted. And this day, the Lord will deliver you up into my hands, and I will strike you down, and I will remove your head from you. You need to remove that head. We will not come back again. Are you with me? And he says, and I will give the dead bodies of the, of the armies of the Philistines this day to the birds of the sky, to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. Amen. Amen. And that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not deliver by sword or by spear, for the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. Amen. Amen. God will give you the victory. Amen. I have a lot of people that come against me. That attack me. Right? And, and, and God tells me, do not do nothing. Don't respond. Don't touch that. Let me fight it for you. I go, okay, God. My flesh, I want to just, you know, retaliate. But God says, no. Have faith in me. Amen. Trust in me. Amen. Let me fight your battle. God is on your side. Amen. God is on your side. Amen. Who is God's side on? Yeah. Your side. That's good news to know. The reason why God will give you victory or in your life is to show you and show them that there is a God and that God still do miracles today. If your addiction is a, is a, is a giant, God can knock down that, that addiction today. He did it in my life. I was hooked on meth and, and marijuana. Marijuana. I was hooked. I loved it. I didn't say about me an alcoholic. I was, I was drinking, but that wasn't my my drug. It was weed and ice. Those were my giants. And in 2005, Jesus broke down those giants. It was because of my saving God. So God, I'm tired of this life. Do something in a miracle. In an instant, God touched my life. And I desire to set free. I have no desire for drugs. No desire. I get tempted, but I have no desire for it. I don't need it. Why? Because I got faith in my God. Amen. God 
It is not delivered by sword or by spear. For the battle is the Lord's. And he will give you into our hands. God's going to give you victory tonight. Then it happened when the Philistine rose. He came and drew near to meet David. That David ran quickly toward the battle line. To meet the giant. And David put his hand to his back. He took from a stone. And he slung it. And he struck the giant on his forehead. And the stone sank into his forehead. So that he fell on his face to the ground. And thus David prevailed over the giants with a sling and a stone. And he struck the Philistine. And he killed him. He was killed right there. But there was no sword in David's hand. Understand the Bible makes this very clear. David didn't win with a sword. How is the sword is sharp like your tongue? You will not win no victory by what you say. Are you with me? Amen. Then David ran and stood over the Philistine. He took his sword and drew it out of his shed. And he killed him. And he cut off his head with it. Then when the Philistines saw that the champion was dead, they fled. They ran away. Because they saw that God was on David's side. Amen. And people will see that God is on your side. Amen. God let me show you, God has been fighting on battles for over 30 years. Amen. For 30 years, God's been fighting our battles. And he's still fighting our battles. Amen. That's how I can live in our name. That's why I don't have to worry about, oh, 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 what are you saying about me? Later for that. Yeah. I don't care. I can care less. Amen. First off, my faith. Well, I don't have great big faith. No, I just have faith in a great God. Amen. See, to overcome mountains and giants in our life, all we need is to have faith in God. You need to have faith in God. Whatever challenge is in your way, whatever is blocking your life, Believe in God to knock down those giants. Amen. Remember this. And I'm almost finished. God is not looking for a person of great faith. He's looking for a person with faith in a great God. Amen. That's all he's asking. That's all he's telling you. Have faith in me, son and daughter. Jesus. Trust in me. I could knock down those giants. If it's alcohol, I can knock it down. Amen. If it's cigarette, it's a little cigarette, but it's a giant. Amen. God can knock it down. Amen. If it's anger, God can knock it down. Amen. If it's a past of a mistake that's, that's haunting you and haunting you, God can knock it down. Whatever the giant is in your life that's stopping us, that's, that's it's, it's taunting your faith. The, the, the giant is trying, is, trying to, is trying to challenge your faith. It's trying to provoke your faith. Be the still the devil. <laughs> devil, I have faith in God. I don't need a lot of faith. You don't need mountain faith. All you need is mustard. Excuse me. Yeah. Hold, your, hold, hold it up. Hold it up. Your mustard. Seeds. Is there any extra? Hold on. I only need 30. I was expecting more people. I have more than. I have a lot more. I got a lot of babies. <laughs> <laughs> Good 
Here, I got two more right here. This one's a German in this. I got you one again. I got you one again, but don't worry, I got you one. I got you one in the church. Come here. You need mustard seed faith. How many know that there's a giant at your door? There's giants. They're, they're constantly knocking. They're constantly challenging you. And, 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 uh, and our, our fear wants to put you down. I'm going to share this. You know, today God steered my faith up. He did my faith. You know, God allows, God, God calls all things to work together for good. Yes. Amen. Amen. And this morning, we woke up to some messages, and God just knew it. Do my faith. Okay, God. I'm trusting you. I'm going to bring this into your hands. You, Father. Amen. Understand this. God, if you respond or if you retaliate with words or action, God puts his hand back. God can do nothing. He already did it. Just trust in God and let God fight your battles. Yeah. The Bible says that the battle is the Lord's. You just have to love God, trust in God, and continue to move forward. God's going to do great things in our life, in your life, in the ministry's life. We already seen it. Doors are being shut right open. It's like, what? We're like, this is crazy. Within a month, we had about two interviews. This thing, in a few two weeks, we're going to have what, like four great interviews on the radio. And, and God's just, he just, it, it is like a domino thing. It's just, God is moving. Well, God made a promise. And his promise never changes. Not just in our, it's to show you that God's promise for your life will not change despite of how imperfect you are. As long as you have faith in God, God's going to move in your life. Yeah. Understand that God is faithful. Man, we're not faithful. Thank God is not based on our faithfulness because we will never have made it. It's all been because God is the one who's faithful. He's faithful to me. He's been faithful to me. And he's going to remain faithful to me. And he's going to be remaining faithful to you. All you need to do is lean on God. Lean on Jesus. And trust in Jesus. And have faith in God. And God's going to move in your life. You're going to tell them now just move. God is on my side. And nothing 